with me. You Bible. come with your Bible. So this is my own complete Bible. Bible. So especially for school age children, school age children are those that can read from six year upward. Please, I need to see your complete Bible. Let me see your complete Bible. Aha, remember it's Bible lesson, right? So Bible is our book. It's a book that we read. That is our guide. All right, good, 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 good. I've seen everybody's Bible. Good of you. Thank you for always remembering to bring your Bibles. Thank you so much. And so people are still standing up to bring their Bibles. It's okay. I will not get tired of remind, reminding you every week. All right, let's pray together as we start. Father, we thank you for today's Bible lesson. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for another season where we celebrate your death and resurrection. Father, we thank you. We thank you for another day where we remind ourselves the reason for the season. Father, we pray as we want to start today, speak to the hearts of every child connecting today in Jesus' name. And those that will Amen. be watching this video later, speak to their hearts. And I pray, Father, fill me up, O oh Lord, with your message to reach out to those ones in love. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. 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 So Easter, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That is what we'll be talking about. Like I said earlier on, it's a one-time teaching. You know, we always have teaching for the month, right? But it's because this is Easter, this will be a one-time teaching for us before we start with other topics the next time we meet. So Easter, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Come along with me and we're able to understand why we celebrate Easter, why we have the season, why it's a season of rejoicing for us. If you don't know before, even if you know before, come along because you will learn something new today. I know God has something in stock for everybody, even for myself. Yes. Okay. Okay. So our Bible reading today will be from the book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 to 9. I need a fast reader to open and read for me. A very fast reader. I don't want a slow reader. A very fast reader. Read or say read, please. Ma'am, there. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our face from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our gifts, our grief, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, taken mission of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The judgment of our people upon him, and we did we are healed. All we are like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on them the iniquities of us all. He has oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shares in dove, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare the generation? <coughs> For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he sticking. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Thank you, Jose, for the smooth and the fast reading. Thank you so much. Okay, this part of the uh, this <laughs> show is talking about Jesus. He talked about how so many things were done to him, how he was rejected, how he was beaten, how he was wounded, even when he had done nothing wrong. And he went through all of this for you and for me. All right, come along with me as we talk about this verse the more. Okay, so why did Jesus come to the world? Why did Jesus come to the children? Do you know why Jesus came to the world? Anybody wants to answer that question? Do you know, have an idea why Jesus came to the world? Anybody? Ayo. No, no, Ayo, yes, Jose, you have just read the Bible. Ayo, yes? 
To save us from our sins. To save us from our sins, okay? That's good. Okay, who wants to do it? Tehila. Tehila, yes. Tehila, I've missed you. You are welcome. <laughs> yes, you want to answer my question, yes? He came to give us life. He came to give us life. Oh, that's good. All right? Who wants to try it? I got me. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Damire. Yes, Damire, answer me. He, he came to the world to protect us. He came to the world to protect us. Thank you, Damire. Okay, who wants to try again? Now me, I now me. Now me, yes. Hola, I am here. Welcome. Yes, now. He came to the he came to the world to join us back to God after the sin of man. Okay, to, to join us back to God after the sin of man. Oh, that's good. Welcome, Esteban, Jim Lass, Adam, Zara. Welcome. Luz. Luz, yes. Luz wants to try. Yes. To save us from our sins. To save us from our sins. Everybody clap for yourself. That was a good try. You are all correct, children. Thank you. Thank you for trying. Okay, so Jesus came to save sinners. Someone already even said that. Someone said he came to Moriyano. Your answer raised. Don't worry, I'll call you the next question. Is that okay? We need to move on now. <laughs> so he came to save sinners. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 says, The saint is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. That's Timothy talking in first Timothy. So he came to save <laughs> sinners. Then he came to give himself as a ransom because. Sinners cannot be free until a ransom is paid. So Jesus came to give himself as a ransom. We'll talk about that more. Then to destroy the works of the enemy. Before Jesus came, hey, the enemy was hovering all over the earth, doing all sorts of things, forcing men to do all sorts of things. And that was part of why Jesus came, to destroy the work of the enemy, to give himself as a ransom, then to save sinners and I, I i i know children you you mentioned you mentioned pretty uh much out of all of this thank you so much for that so who were the sinners that christ died for who were the sinners can anybody try who were the sinners that me and you now okay. me and you okay, okay. thank okay. you me and you thank you he came to die oh, for all of me. us romans chapter 3 verse 23 says for all our okay. sin and fall short of the glory of God. So he came to die for everybody, all of us, the young, the old, the middle class, the born, the yet unborn. He came to die for everybody. All right, come along with me. All right, can you see this? So before Jesus came uh, to this world, before Jesus came to the world, sin reigned in the world. You see, everybody kept on sinning and sin. Everybody doing bad things. Nobody even knew the right thing to do. Death reigned. People were just dying. Someone will kill the brother or the sister for no reason. Hey, he did something wrong and you kill. They'll say, oh, he slept with another man, stoned him to death. You see, death reigned in the world. Before Jesus came, the condemnation we were condemned any little thing you do like the uh like the woman like the woman the prostitute he said that he did the wrong thing he went against the law we'll stone her to death we must kill her you see condemnation for every act people were condemned and sometimes it leads to their early death that was what happened before jesus came and before jesus came sickness reigned people will just be falling sick and it kills them Sickness that we do not even know the cause of it. Sickness that will not go away. Sickness that will come and claim lives, take away lives, and cut short the lives of babies, lives of children, like of young adults, lives of teenagers, like of adults. Sickness reigned in this world before Jesus came to the world. Please, if you have a question, just keep it. Is that okay? After uh, after now, I will answer all questions. Is that okay? So, Maria, no, you have a question. I know, just keep it. I will, I will answer. I do not have a question. I want to say something. You want to say something? Okay, what do you want to say, Maria? Maria, no. Okay, she's gone. 
All right. So, all right. What happened on the first Easter? What happened on the first Easter? We said Easter is what? The death and the resurrection of Easter. So, what happened on the first Easter? This is the Easter we are celebrating is the years after. Let's see what happened on the first Easter. Can you see? Can you see Jesus? Yes. Jesus is there on the yes. cross. He was nailed on the cross with thieves on the right and the left side. He was in the middle of thieves. Did he do anything wrong because before he was crucified? No. He did, in fact, he did not sin. He was even helping uh, be, uh, people. He was healing the sick. He was raising the dead. He was telling them about God the Father. He would give them food. You see, he was doing good to them. But they wanted him dead. They wanted Jesus dead. And so when uh, they were asked that should we uh, kill the thief, Barnabas, they said, no, free Barnabas. We want Jesus crucified. Someone that has not seen. But you know that all of these things were just part of the plan of God for us. And when Jesus was on that cross, something happened. Something that the eyes did not see. Something that was not physical happened. And that is all we'll see in this video. You see, you see, while he was on the cross, the sin of the whole world was on him. Death was on him. Can you see? Sin was judged on the body of Christ. Condemnation, he was condemned. Everything that we ought to be condemned for, he was condemned on the body of Christ. Curse that was meant to be on us was taken by Jesus. Death, sickness. Can you see everything? Everything are coming. They are coming to the body of Jesus on the cross. Oh you see? Because Jesus, uh, because God the Father could not stand sin. God the Father had to forsake, had to turn his back on his son. God the Father had to turn his back on Jesus when he was carrying the sin of God. Can you see all the sin entering into the body of Jesus? That was what happened on the cross. Jesus bore the curse. He bore the pain. He bore the condemnation. He bore the sin. He bore death. He took everything that was meant to come to us. He took everything on the cross. That was what happened that the eyes did not see when Jesus was on the cross. That was why God the Father forsook Jesus on the cross, his son, because he could not bear sin. God had to turn his back on Jesus, and Jesus had to go through all of this suffering. Can you see everything? It was painful for Jesus. It was, it was a moment of pain. And the Bible recorded that for three hours, everywhere became dark. That was Jesus bearing. And after he bore everything, he said, it is finished. Can you see? He said, it is, it is finished. Can you see? And light came back. Because Jesus bore our sins on the cross. That was what happened when Jesus was on the cross. That was what happened that our physical eyes did not see that Jesus bore on the cross. All the sins that the world was carrying before he came, he bore everything. All the condemnation, all the curse, all the sicknesses, he bore everything. And afterwards, he said, Father, to your hands I commit my spirit. And he died. He died. But did the story end there? Did Jesus die that we all mourn and say, Oh, Jesus is dead. Ah, and the disciples were crying. He was such a good man. How can a good man go? Why do good men die? Why? Why? We thought he was our savior. To them at that moment, his disciples had lost hope. Because they thought Jesus was their savior. Well, there is the Jesus they are seen as their savior dead. He has been killed. He has been sick crucified. But there's something that we all did not know. That uh -uh, after the death, something happened. From the cross, Jesus was taken to the tomb. Jesus took every sin. He took condemnation, sickness, curse, death of humanity. He took them all in his body. And took all the punishment that you deserve, that I deserve. Fully, even to final death. Jesus brought everything on his body. But something happened. After bearing all of that, 
He died for three days. The three days he died, he was not just sleeping there. He went to take away the power from the, from the devil. He took the power from him and said, no, you have no power over these ones that have died for a day. And what happened on the third day? He resurrected. What does it mean to resurrect? He rose again. He is alive again. He became alive again. Children, that's the meaning of resurrection. He came back to life. Uh -huh. For the younger ones, I'll say, Auntie, what's the meaning of resurrection? He came back to life. Someone that has been dead for three good days. One, two, three. Everybody has lost hope. The disciples were crying. They were even hiding. And, hey, they've killed Jesus now. It is us they will kill. They went to hide. But Jesus came back to life after three days. But he didn't come back to life the way he used to be. Mm -mm. He came back a changed man. Okay, Romans chapter 4 verse 25 says, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised up because of our being declared righteous. When Jesus rose up again, do you know what happened? He had taken away our sins. He had taken away everything that the devil had on us for, for punishing us every day. He took away everything. And now, because Jesus rose again on the third day, we, we are being called righteous. He said, that is, if any man remained, if any sin remained, he would not have risen. If there was sin in our body, Jesus would not have risen. He took away all the sins, all the pain, all the cost. He took everything away and died with it. He took it down underneath the earth and collected the key of our freedom of life and came back to life to give you an I life. All right, let's go ahead. Okay, so the death of Jesus is for the whole world. It's for the whole continent. It's for every country, all the countries of the world. It's for every state in every country. It's for every town in every state. It's for every village. Everybody. Everybody. The death of Jesus is for all. No one left behind. So, now... Jesus died for people from every age. Jesus died for people from every age. What does that mean? That means Jesus died for people from the time of Abraham, uh, from the time of Adam. When Adam was created and Eve was created in the garden, he died for everybody to Noah's heart. To everybody during the time of Noah. Christ died for everybody to the people in the time of Moses. And even during the law, when God was still giving us laws, he died for everybody, even to the time of the kings and the prophets. Christ died for people in the past. God died for everyone to the birth of Jesus. Christ died for the days of the church. Christ died for everyone till he returned. What does that mean? Christ died for the past, the present, and even the future. Were you there when Jesus, Christ, when Jesus Christ died? Were you there? Children, have you been born when Jesus died? Have you been born? No. No. I was not also born when Jesus died. Why is it that now that we are born, we are still enjoying what Jesus has done? Do you know why? Because Jesus died for everybody. Even those unborn, those yet unborn. He said he died for everyone till he returns, till Jesus returns. He just died, died for all of us. He died for our past sins. He died for our present sins. He won't yeah. die for our future sins. He died for every, every one of us. No one is left behind in the death of Christ. This is because the worth of this man, Jesus, is more than the earth. Jesus is worth more than the earth. More than all the planets, the moons, the stars, the sun, the galaxy, the physical, the spiritual, all put together if you put everything together jesus is more than all of these things when this type of person died for you his death is more than enough to save everyone we said jesus was without sin he was the son of god himself so that he might die for you and i he left his father in heaven and came to live with us on earth and the bible says he knew no sin he was not a, he was not a sinner mm -mm. he knew no sin so he was a perfect sacrifice. He was a perfect lamb to free us from the hold of the devil, to free us from the cage of death and pain and curse, 
to free us from the pain of sickness and diseases, to free us from everything negative that we have found ourselves. Children, this is what Christ has come to do for us. So, because of what Jesus has done, you see, we live in forgiveness, we are forgiven, we live in good health, we live in peace, we enjoy blessing, God's blessing, we enjoy eternal, eternal life. We live, have love. We know how to love ourselves. We know how to love others. We even know how to love God. Children, because of what Jesus has done, we enjoy all of these things because of Jesus. And that is the reason for the season. That is why we celebrate Christmas. Uh, sorry, Easter. <laughs> Christmas is far away. That is why we celebrate Easter. Do you know why? Because Jesus did yeah, not just die. No, he rose again. That is our testimony. That is our joy. That is the reason for the season. If Jesus had not risen again, we would, have, we would not have been saved. But because he rose again, that brings our own what? That brings our own, uh, uh, that is, that is, that, that is uh, what Christ has come to do for us. He is our savior to save us. Everyone and anyone can access Jesus give by faith. Now Jesus has died for you children. Now Jesus has died for me. Do you think that everybody is free from death right now that Jesus has died? Do you think, do you think so? Do you think yes. so? Yes. 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 Everybody is free, but on one condition. We said everyone and anyone can access Jesus' gifts by faith. So if you don't have faith, you cannot access what Jesus has done for you. What does the faith mean? If you don't believe that Jesus died for you on the cross, that he came to save you. If you don't confess with your mouth that, yes, I believe you have come to save me and I confess with my mouth that you are my savior. We said those people will not enjoy what Jesus has come to do for them. Those kind of people, they will not enjoy. So those kind of people will not enjoy forgiveness. They will not enjoy divine health. They will not enjoy blessings. They will not enjoy peace. They will not enjoy love. And they will not even enjoy eternal life. Those kind of people will still be living in sickness, in uh, with curse, with uh, condemnation, uh, with bad, uh, bad life. They will still continue to live in sin, except they can access this thing that jesus has come to do this gift by faith by believing in jesus children this is the time to say lord i believe in you if you've not just even if you've just just been attending bible lesson or you've always just been connecting with bible lesson and you've never for once told jesus and say lord i know that you come to you have come to die for my sins to take away my sins to die so that i can enjoy life I believe that you did all of that for me. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. Reign in my life today in Jesus' name. If you've never said that prayer before, children, that kind of child will not enjoy everything that we have said here. We not enjoy all of this. In fact, they, that kind of child will not enjoy eternal life. What is eternal life? Going to heaven after this life. That kind of person will not enjoy good life here and good life after now. That kind of person will just enjoy bad life on earth and even go to hell at the end of life. After death, yeah, the person will still die again in hell. Children, if you have never told Jesus to come into your heart, if you have never told him that you know that he died for you and you believe in your heart that is your savior and you want him to reign in your life, this is the right time. I want you to bow your heads right now and just talk to God and say, Father, I have heard your word today. For those of you that have not said it before, I have heard your word today. Just bow your heads, close your eyes, and say all of these things have been done today. I said I can only access health, access huh? blessings, access eternal life. Yeah. I can only enjoy eternal life, enjoy divine health, enjoy happiness, enjoy peace. I can only enjoy it if I have faith in you. And faith is believing that you come to die for me. Lord, I believe that you have come to die for me. Reign in my life. You are my Lord and my Savior. I receive you into my heart today. Reign in me, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And for those of you that have told Jesus to come into your heart before, 
This is the time to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. This is the time to talk to God and say, thank you for sending thank Jesus to die for me. Thank you thank for you loving me so much. Thank you so much. Lord, I'm grateful. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for giving me life, eternal life, because of what Jesus has done. Thank you for giving me peace, for giving me love, for giving me divine help because of what Jesus has done. Children, what all of you just pray. Just talk to God. Say, Father, thank you. Lord, I'm grateful for what Jesus has done. For those that have told Jesus to come into their lives before, just say, thank you, Father. Thank you for sending your son to die for me. Thank you because it's another instant to remember what Jesus has done. Lord, I thank you. I do not take it for granted. I do not take you for granted. I'm grateful. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We for thank today. you for every child that have connected to this platform today. We thank you for those that have even asked you to come into their life, to reign in their life and be their God. Father, we pray for such ones, oh Lord. Make them your own in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that your light shines in their lives and you teach them our right and you reveal yourself to them in Jesus' name. And for those that have given their lives to you before, thank you for their lives when they continue to remain in you and tell others to come out your love also. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Our Bible says, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 4. Can we all read it together? For those that can read, for those that can read, mommy and daddy beside you can just read along with us. All right, can we read it together? One, two, go. Let's read what is on the screen. For one, I receive. I Thank you, children. Thank you, children. First Corinthians 15, verse 3 to 4. For what I received, I pass on to you. As false as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins and carried to the scriptures that he is buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Christ was raised on the third day according to the scripture. Christ didn't just die. He rose again, children, and that is the reason. I can't hear you. All right. Someone says he can't hear me. Can you hear me now? I can't. Can you hear me now? I hope it's not your network because I can hear you clearly. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. All right, thank you. All right, so we said Christ did not just die. No, he was not just buried. No, he rose again on the third day. And that is why we are celebrating Easter. That is the reason for the season. He died for you. He died for me. Even he died for children that are yet unborn. Those of you that are not yet born. Christ has already died for them. And how can we assess what Jesus has done? By simply believing, by faith. By faith. Believing that he died for you. Believing that he is your savior. And saying, Father, reign in my life. You are my God. Reign in my life. That is all that you need. And that is all we have done today. So for everyone that has joined today, that have told Jesus to come and reign in their lives, you are now children of God. What does that mean? Now you enjoy peace. You enjoy love. You enjoy, uh, you are now made righteous in Christ. Jesus' righteousness is now your righteousness. Is now my righteousness. That is now you enjoy eternal life. So you are no more afraid of death. You are no more afraid of death. I will answer your question, please. You are no more afraid of death because you know that after now, you have life. Who is that? I said I will answer your question, but who is that? Let me answer it now. It seems it can't work. Tehila. Tehila, yes. What do you mean by the, the combination? By what? By com. Is it condemnation you want to say or what? Yes. Condemnation. 
Condemnation is when someone is being accused for what he has done and say, oh, maybe the person has done something wrong and he say, okay, let's kill this person. Let's stone her to death. Like that woman that was brought to Jesus. He said he was caught in the act of adultery. He was, she was caught sleeping with another man that is not her husband. And they wanted to kill her and say, I will must stone her to death. What the other did, they were condemning her. That's condemnation. They were condemning her. And they had given her instant judgment. And what is the judgment? To stone her to death. That, that is what the Lord told them. But when Christ came, Christ saved us from all of those things. Because they brought her to Jesus. Did the woman die? No, the woman did not die. Jesus said the first person that the first person that I've never seen before should throw the first stone. Anyone that has not seen before should throw the first stone. No one could throw it because all of them knew that ah, I've, at, at one time done something wrong. I want that, so they left. And that was how Jesus was able to save that woman. And she was not judged. That is condemnation. And that is what the devil does from time, always, especially to everybody in the world. But it's only when we are in Christ eh, that we are free from this kind of condemnation. So because Jesus has come to die for us, nobody can condemn you anymore. Because you are now a child of God. You are now safe in Christ. Now, Jesus' righteousness is your righteousness. Is my righteousness. It's not about what I do anymore. It's about what Jesus has done for me. And that is what we are enjoying today. That is why we are called children of God. We enjoy everything Jesus has done. Everything Jesus is supposed to enjoy as a child of the Father in heaven of God. That is what we are enjoying today. Because Jesus has taken our place. So that we also have taken his place. So now before we were not children of God before Jesus came. But because Jesus has come, we are now children of God. We now enjoy it being children of God. We enjoy good things. Is that okay? Have I asked yeah. your question? Okay, Morianu raised her hand and she's still raising her hand. Yes, Morianu, your question. Morianu, is she there? Unmute yourself. Okay, I think. Uh, if you come back and you still want to uh, uh, ask me a question, yes, you can ask me a question. All right, children. So now I believe today you understood what Jesus went through. That The video that was shown was not something the eyes saw when Jesus was on the cross, but that was what happened to Jesus on the cross. He took in sin, death, pain, our own, the one that is meant for us. He took in everything. It was judged on his body. And that is why today, it is wrong for you to be uh, to face any form of pain. Eh? It is wrong for you to face any form of death. No one can kill you. Mm -mm. Except God says, no, my child, it is time for you to come home. Mm -mm. No man can. Because you are now free from all of this thing. Jesus has given you eternal life. Life after death. That even after this body is gone, you enjoy, you go to heaven. You continue to enjoy better life. Is that okay? So that is why when you see any form of sickness in your body, you say, no, Jesus has taken away my sickness. So by Jesus Christ, I am healed. So sickness, you are not permitted in this body, out in Jesus' name. And the sickness will obey you. Do you know why? Because he knows you know your right in Christ. He knows you know your right in Christ. So he will definitely obey you. That is why you cannot be poor, children. Your mom or your dad can never be poor. Do you know why? Because Jesus is poor, has been poor so that you and I can be rich. That is why you don't say, oh, I don't have money, I am poor. You can never be poor because you are a child of God. Say, devil, I can never be poor. Poverty is not my portion and it's not meant for my parents. Because Jesus has become poor for my sake so that I can enjoy wealth, good, great riches. Is that okay? That is where you speak. That is where the armor of God comes in. Is that okay? That is where you speak with your mouth what Jesus has done. And say, this is what Jesus has done and this is what I enjoy. Is that okay, children? All right. So that is the reason for the season. Jesus is not there. He's just, just, just died. Friday, Jesus died. Saturday, Sunday, he rose again. And that is the reason for the season. So Jesus, because Jesus rose again, you have life. I have life. We all have life for what Jesus has done. Everybody just say thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Everybody just say thank you. Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What you have done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you. All right, this is the time where I'll be sharing my screen and be playing some for you. But before then, thank you, Jesus. All right, before then, thank you all our Facebook audience. Happy Easter to you. Thank you for joining today for our YouTube audience. Thank you for joining us today. I believe you have learned something. Maybe that you've not learned before. I believe that uh, eyes have been opened to something new that has been taught today. This is the time we'll be saying bye, but not to the Zoom. Children, you don't go. I'm saying bye to Facebook audience and uh, YouTube audience. So children on Zoom, please. <laughs> we are still together. All right. <laughs>